Hello, welcome to Clear Vision Wednesday, another episode uh, on my podcast. This is all about healing or restoring your eyesight, getting out of glasses. So you kind of beat the odds, you anti-age your eyes, whatever you want to call it, but you see better. Usually we all get older, none of us gets younger, but for most of us, the vision declines. And really my mission with this podcast is to educate you on what you can do to improve your vision and maybe get out of glasses just like I did. And some weeks I have a guest on. And before I continue, make sure you subscribe, you share this channel, so you like and subscribe. And if you have any questions and you're watching live, you can answer the question, uh, put the questions in the comments, and then we will go through them and answer them um, during the live show. Okay. So my guest today is Michal Miller from, she actually lives in Palm Beach, Florida, and she is uh, a listening to the eyes therapist, a health practitioner a Bates uh, method teacher, and she also uses a method called Paula method, which we will really look into today. She helps people with chronic conditions, including vision issues, helps them connect with their bodies to understand their needs and, and um, help themselves heal. So let me bring you on, Michal, let me bring you on the spotlight. Is any, I think you're still muted. <laughs> Welcome. Hi, Claudia, how are you? I'm really, really good. And I'm excited about this. We actually met, you and I met at a conference. So we are both in the Association of Vision Educators here in America. And uh, we met at a conference and I've heard so many modalities, you know, if, that are related to vision improvement. I was like, I've never heard of the Paula method. Uh, so tell us a little bit before we even get into that, like, what's your background? How did you get into doing all this work? And yeah. <laughs> Would love to do that. Thank you for having me here. Well, how did I get to holistic health? First of all, as a patient, I was born sick. <laughs> Almost from day one, I had severe asthma. Later on, I had um, problems with my eyes. And then many hormonal issues. I was a very sickly, weak kid. I fainted in school almost daily. I fainted at home, couldn't climb stairs because I was so weak. And, and, um, and unfortunately, doctors were not able to help me. And my mom was really just looking for ways to help me. It wasn't normal, you know, that they faint all the time and that they can't breathe and that we run to the hospital constantly. And, you know, one by one, those holistic practitioners showed themselves and we met wonderful people who really helped me. Um, and so that's where my kind of like, I don't know, tendency to look for more holistic health, you know, ways to, to, to heal and work with my body became, you know, something that I'm looking for in my life. and and searching first before I go to a doctor. Um, and then at the age, I'll, I'll try to do it briefly, but I think already at the age of 20, I started learning, I started learning um, Reiki, channeling, reflexology, um, reading, uh, palm reading, but for health and um, nail reading. And I became macrobiotic and I still live macrobiotically since the age of 17. So it's over 30 years now. Um, and so on and so forth. So I started, but all this time I was still a school teacher. <laughs> oh, you were a school teacher. teacher. Okay. Yeah, so I did all these trainings and stuff, Had never treated anyone except for my family. Um, and all this time I was a special ed teacher. And really teaching was my, my passion and still is. That's the thing I love to do the most. I love to help people, but not in a way of like telling them what to do, more in the way of supporting them and being there, witnessing. I'm like, I feel like I'm like the supportive mother, you know, I'm there. I, I really believe in my students and then I just encourage them. And I witness that miracle happening in front of my, of my eyes. And that's the way I teach <laughs> when I'm, you know, when I was a school teacher and until today, whenever I have an opportunity, just last night, I helped my niece with her psychology course in college, you know, whenever I have the opportunity to teach. And then 
after the birth of my daughter, um, I just didn't get back to myself. I was always a very thin woman. And then I gave birth and eight months after the birth, I still looked like I'm going to give birth any day. I'm carrying a baby and I'm like, what's going on here? Because I do so much physical activity and I eat healthy and I live healthily. So why, why this huge belly? And wherever I go with the baby, people tell me, oh, you're pregnant already. And I'm like, oh. no, I'm not pregnant. It's just the belly isn't going anywhere. I don't know what to do. And one day I spoke on the phone with my sister, who's the person I'm visiting right now, by the way, I'm not home. Um, and she said, well, maybe you should look for a Pola practitioner. Now for people who are not Americans, it's Paula, okay? The, the name of the method is Paula. The woman who invented, uh, developed the method was German actually, and her name is Paula Garburg. And I said, okay, I'll look for a practitioner. She said, they'll definitely be able to help me help you. And so I looked online and tried to find a practitioner and I found out there was no one in the United States. I already lived in the United States back then. I was like, where do I find a practitioner? I called my sister again. She said, Try in Israel. <laughs> there are many practitioners in Israel. And so I contacted somebody in Israel and uh, we started a conversation. And she said, uh, okay, so you gave birth and the belly's not going away. And okay, and she said, so how severe is your asthma? And I said, did I mention that I have asthma? She said, no, but that's, that's, that's a problem that women with asthma have. And I'm like, really? She said, yeah, it's, 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 it's a small problem. We'll fix it in no time. And then we started working together. She was wrong. It wasn't in no time. It really took us a whole year to fix that problem. And we encountered many other issues on the way, things that I wasn't even aware of that were part of my physical problems. But we did solve it. And I just liked this method so much that I decided to become a practitioner. And that's where I started with the Pola method. Now, Pola method is something, I'm really a teacher. I don't do things to people. I teach them what to do, how to help themselves. Uh, and that's something I connect with, of course, naturally. I, I like to teach. So that's my connection with that. That is super interesting. I mean, especially that she asked you right away about your asthma, right? You see that connection. So about yeah, I'm just curious before we get more into the, the yeah. method and how you work with people. Um, so what was your own vision? You said you had issues with your eyes. You were a really sick child. Um, did you ever wear glasses? I never wore glasses. I would just, um, it was hard to see. I had a little bit of amblyopia. Not everyone saw this. My mom noticed it. And then I started seeing all kinds of doctors and worked with them. But the person who really helped me most was Anat Road, And I met her already in my very late 40s. Um, and she was the one who helped me. And that was through conversations with my eyes that were one of the most phenomenal things I've ever done. And I've done a lot of work with myself. The eyes just said exactly what they wanted. And I changed my life according to what my eyes were asking. And Can I pause? Can I pause there? So yeah. <laughs> for those of you that don't know, Anat was already on my pod podcast she calls a method conversation with the eyes or listening to the eyes. And it's a, I've experienced this. I did her super level, level, level one out of, I don't know, 100 level training. And it's very fascinating because like you said, you get these messages from your eyes where I'm like, hey, how does this work? But it works, it's amazing. And so you just said something really powerful. You said you were actually doing what your eyes ask you to do. And I think, I don't know about you, but I'm curious when you teach, because you said you teach, right? You help people, you guide, you're like a guide, right? You guide them along. And I think a lot of times, um, I wanna do a little side detour here because I hear a lot of people tell me, oh, so you can fix my eyesight. I'm like, I can't do anything. <laughs> no. I can guide you, I can see things, I can teach you, right? So that, I think this is really important for, for everybody and to understand that you have to be willing to listen to your eyes or your teacher or both and make those changes that can sometimes not be the easiest, right? So maybe do you have a couple of stories or maybe actually before we do that, tell us a little bit about the Paula method and how that fits into the vision improvement and your overall self-healing approach. 
Okay, I'd love to do that. It's actually, I find it to be very interesting. So the Polo method, briefly, the reason many people hear about it is actually the part that is, sorry, I don't know, that I, I less connect with, it's not true, I connect with everything in the Polo method, really, it's a magical method, I love it, but there are parts to the method and there is one part that I'm more inclined to. People know about the method because it's known as the sphincters method or ring muscles method. Uh, basically, Paula Garber, the woman who developed the method, found out that there, there is a whole system of muscles in our bodies, in our body, that are related and connected to each other. And this uh, system is so wonderful that we can work with one part of the system, one well-working and, and healthy part of the system and affect different parts in the system, specifically uh, parts that are injured or out of balance for whatever reason. It's a very, very holistic way of thinking because we really work with what's working well in the body, not what's, what's not working well. We don't put the focus there. We put the focus on what's working well and we allow the body to go back to balance. Now, what are the sphincters muscles or the sphincter muscles or the ring muscles, the way we call them in Hebrew? Those are all the, the, the muscles that are opening in our face and in our pelvic floor and inside the body. We have millions and millions of sphincters, sphincters in the body. They're shaped like rings and they close or contract and then relax and then there's opening. So for instance, our eyelids, it's a very big um, muscle, a very big sphincter. That's the size of it. You see, it can close, so we can close our eyes, and we can blink, or we can even contract the eyes and really close them hard. And also there is another muscle that will open them. But really, if I'm asleep and I just relax the muscle, the eyes will open. Okay, so it's all about those contractions and relaxations, contractions and relaxations of these muscles. We have them along our blood vessels, our respiratory system, digestive system. And as I said, also in our eyes, so in the eyes, we have the eyelid muscle, the orbicularis oculi, um, around, you know, the two eyes. And then we also have the iris of the eye and the pupillary sphincter that contracts the pupil of the eye to restrict the amount of light that comes in. So just think about the muscle that went out of balance, right? Some people have dilated uh, pupils or pupils that do not function well. We can fix them with other sphincters in the body that do function well. And that's a wonderful thing. Now, the polar method has many, 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 many exercises that activate these wonderful muscles in the eyes, but they do not claim to help with eye issues, although we do that often, it happens naturally while working on different parts of the body. And we also have many contraindications, so we're not allowed to work with this and we're not allowed to work with that. And we have to really be careful with people with cataracts and people with glaucoma and people with um, retina aspiration and all kinds of things, and I'm like, after teaching the method for many years, I was like, I don't want to be so scared working with people with eye issues. One of the things that happened to me, people would come to work with me and they would keep it away from me, like would hide the fact that they had severe eye issues because they didn't want me to restrict the work with them because they already had experience with other practitioners of the polar method and they knew how much they helped their eyes, but they knew that I'm not supposed to work with them if they have you know, X, Y, or Z. Can, can you, can I interrupt? Can you explain? So you, when you can come a little closer, actually the sound gets a little better. So you said you're not supposed to work with cataracts, which is the clouding of the lens, glaucoma, which is a disease of the optic nerve, usually related to pressure in the intraocular pressure of the eye, um, which where you lose peripheral vision. So just curious, like, because obviously you did work there because they hid it from you. And I want to hear those stories, but why is the idea that you shouldn't work with anybody who has those conditions? I don't really know the, the answer for that. I know that Paula was very, she was a very careful person. And mm. she really wanted to work hand in hand with other doctors. She really wanted the 
medical institute to, to, to be friends with her. You know, she brought something that was extremely holistic and she didn't want to cause any problems. You know, she wanted right. to work with the institute. And so I think that in a way, out of respect, she said, I'm not dealing with eye issues. Of course, she knew that she was helping people. I know in person so many polar practitioners that she helped with eye issues. And, and these stories are well known. Um, but when you study it as a practitioner, this is a three years program um, that you study to become a teacher, they always tell you, be very, very careful with eye issues. Anyways, one day I decided enough is enough. I want to learn about the eyes. I want to understand. I want to learn about all the physical issues that can, I want to understand the anatomy. And then I met Sanat and she helped me so much with my <laughs> eyes. And her training is a whole year, a very, very intense year, tons of anatomy, tons of physiology, tons of Bates method and other things. And of course, talking to, uh, listening to the eyes. And I was like, yeah, I found it. And then uh, during COVID, she couldn't teach in person and she started an online program. And she called me, she said, Michal, you can join from New York, no worries, <laughs> come join my program. And I did that year. The first year of COVID, that was my training with her. And then I finally understood what I'm allowed to work with and what I'm, you know, supposed to be careful with. And now I really combined the polar method and the Bates method, and listening to the eyes all together to one beautiful mixture that I find work really well together. Can you give us, can you tell us some stories uh, about some, you know, you, you mentioned people didn't ha ha hid from you that they had cataracts or other eye issues so tell, can you tell us some stories yeah it's hard to choose one let me think what would well be you can tell more than one <laughs> <laughs> um so i tell you because i'm thinking whether to focus on stories of clients where the conversation with the eyes were more helpful or when the pull out method was more helpful or like I'm trying to think what doesn't matter let, I mean let me relax for a moment and just yeah, get that okay. inspiration um okay I'll give an, an example that combines Paula and um and listening to the eyes so this uh client contacted me to work on pelvic floor issues and we scheduled the appointment the appointment and I I always send an email, like a confirmation email before the first, um, you know, consultation. And I, I don't receive any response. And I'm like surprised in the day off, I send another email, like what's going on? Like are we seeing each other? And then I, she emails me like two minutes before the meeting saying, I'm so sorry, but I had inner eye bleeding and I can't really read, like I can't use my eye. My doctors told me to stay away from the computer. So, but I remember that we have this meeting today. I apologize, but I have to reschedule. And I responded quickly, you know, I was fresh out of uh, my studies with Anat. And I responded and I said, actually, I know it's not on my website yet, but I also work with people's eyes. If you want me to try and help you with the bleeding, uh, let me know. And she was like, yes, I do. And we met that morning. Um, and she was very concerned. The doctor told her that he'll give her a few days, but then if it's not getting better, they'll have to operate. And she was so scared. And I said, let's, let's just try to calm down. Let's, let's see what we can do today, okay? And, and just go from there. And of course, we started with calming and relaxing and all that. And then we started talking to her eyes and they were so cooperating. And they told us exactly why this bleeding happened. She basically was going to start doing something in her career that her eyes did not approve. Their, her eyes really wanted to protect her from something. She knew what they are trying to protect her from. But you know, in her career, she was in a way committed to what she had to do next. And she couldn't see a way out of there. And she was kind of like going into that place of, no, you know, point of no return in her career where she had to do that 
something. I don't want to mention what it was. Yeah, that's exactly. okay. That's okay. Yeah, we get the idea. Yeah. <laughs> and the eyes said no. And she listened to them. And she decided to call and to, to, to get herself out of that project. She did that. The bleeding cleared in no time. I can't remember how many days, but it was clear. When she got to the doctor, the doctor was like, it's all good. You can go home. <laughs> wow, that is just a, a crazy example of how we innately, like you were just help, helping her, right? You did that method, you did the palming, you know, where you cover the eyes and you do that whole guided meditation that is listening to the eyes in this case. And you basically, you know, there is a clear message. And I think, you know, I you probably have stories like me too, where people do not listen and you're like, you're like, <laughs> so easy and yeah so um that's a fabulous story if you can think of another one then let us know but maybe you can I do do a guided maybe we can do uh something from the Paula method uh, just kind of okay okay so would you like me to tell a story or would you yeah, like to tell another story and then let we can do something more hands-on and I'm looking on YouTube also if there's any questions so all right so one of the things that I uh, realized when I did my internship with Anat was that often um, we start working with the eyes and then the body takes us to a different place because the problem is not in the eyes. The problem is someplace else. But the eyes, the eyes are just so wonderful and, and, and miraculous. They will kind of like, you know, they will not give up. They'll say, there is a problem, there is a problem, there is a problem, there is a problem, we'll insist on it. Now, many of the people that I worked with during my internship, surprisingly enough, had digestive issues. And it occurred again and again and again. People came because they had all kinds of eye issues. And then we started working with the eyes and the work went to the stomach, went to the digestive system, went to whatever, again and again. And I'm like, What's going on here? It is so fascinating. Just about, I don't know, a month ago, one of the polar practitioners in Israel, we also have our WhatsApp group, like the vision practitioners. Uh -huh. People write things all the time. You know, these uh, groups are also so busy. And one of the teachers there mentioned that she walked in the street and she met a doctor that she knows. He is a family doctor. And they spoke. And then she texted us on the WhatsApp group and she said, Oh, it was such a good. Like, um, like refreshing from my memory, this doctor worked with my children when they were little. And whenever they had stomach issues, he'd say, take them to the eye doctor as well. And she said, why? And he said, eyes and stomach, eyes and digestion are so like related to each other. So when we see an ongoing digestive issue, we want to also check the eyes. And I saw that during my internship. Now, when I see that in my clients, I'm not even doubting it. I'm like, yeah, I know. It was actually the digestion and vice versa. Um, so I don't know. That's another story. I don't know. If it's Super helpful. interesting. I mean, we know about the connection to the liver, the detox pathways, you know, from traditional Chinese medicine. And yeah, I think it just shows us how it's, very so much connected and you know as much as i appreciate western specialists when it comes to like emergency treatments and stuff which is really you know life-saving in many times or but it's like you know it's like they're so uh, myopic or so tunnel visioned in the actual problem that they don't see so so is there kind of an and we didn't actually discuss this beforehand but is there some kind of technique that we could explore together like with the sphincters or like okay tell us so before we start <laughs> And we are going to explore together. The way I wish to put the, uh, the uh, emphasis here today about the fact that we have a body, we all live in a, in a body, a physical body that is very communicative, one, and also very intelligent. And we're not aware of it, but our body is constantly working on our well being. That's what the body does. It keeps pumping blood, it keeps getting air in, it keeps digestion or digesting our food. The body is always working and working well, unless something disturbs it. And I think that nowadays we give, the, we give our bodies very little credit 
for the amazing work that they're all doing. Like the, the body is, is just phenomenal. And what I want to tell people is this, really, if we only allowed ourselves to connect to this wonderful body of ours, just listen to the messages. Am I tired? Am I hungry? Do I have pain anywhere? Am I exhausted? Do I need something else from what I'm currently doing? Perhaps I'm sitting by the computer, but I really need to step outside and be in the fresh air for a little bit. Just noticing these things can already improve our health and our balance so incredibly well. But the body goes beyond that. There are subtle messages that are always there. And for whatever reason, our society teaches us to ignore it. And in a way, it takes away our, our power to connect with ourselves, to heal ourselves and to live our lives in a, in a much more balanced and happy way. And I want people to know that you don't need so many specialists. You have to slow down and connect with yourself. And what I would like us to do today is a little palming session, if you're willing to. I mean, it's up to you, you're the boss here. And to see how we can connect with the body just through palming, which is something that is so healthy for everyone with any health issues, doesn't have to be an eye issue, any health issues, in a health issue can benefit from hands over eyes or palming. In the polar method, we call it hands over eyes. It's also one of the most important exercises in our method as well. And one of the reasons is that when we cover the eyes, we really cover the eye with the parts of the hands, the hand that are more cushiony and soft. And where do we place them? We place them on the bony parts, right? Our cheekbone, our, our forehead, our eyebrow bone, the, the ridge of the nose, and this softness touches the bone and really covers the periphery of the ring muscles around the eyes. And this sends signal to the rest of our body to relax because once those two large sphincters, the two orbicularis oculi relax, all the sphincters in the body relax. And therefore, there is a chain reaction, this ripple effect throughout our body that tells the body, calm down. And we connect with the parasympathetic um, system and the vagus nerve and everything calms down. And from there on, the body can start the self-healing work. Let's do it. Let's do a little short one. Then we have a couple of questions on YouTube, but let's just... Uh... Let's, do, let's do like three minutes of that, okay? <clears throat> I'll, I'll put the okay. timer so I, I, I don't, uh, you know, go beyond. Okay. So okay. I'm going to start I doing think, palming. Right. Start doing palming. I think the best way to do it is actually lying down, but probably okay. many of you cannot lie down. Those who can, just lie down. Lie down in your bed, on the sofa, wherever you can, or on the floor. A nice carpet will be great so that it's not too hard, the surface you're on. And those who are sitting and doing their palming sitting, that's not a problem, okay? Just think, oh, not think, just take into consideration that you can do this lying down later on, maybe tonight before you go to bed. And right now we're not doing anything. We're just placing our hands over our eyes and we're going to relax and feel that wonderful sensation Nicely rippling, rippling from our eyes to the rest of our face, our head. The eyes are closed, just like in, uh, right? Correct? The eyes are closed. Well, I wouldn't be so strict. If your eyes want to be open, they can be open. Okay. <laughs> because okay. you still apply, apply the pressure to the orbicularis oculi. Um, you can be with your eyes open or closed, but you do want to see the darkness underneath your palms. Just go with whatever feels most comfortable for you today. Just let yourself sink into your body and feel whatever it is that your body is telling you right now. It can be gentle pleasantness of relaxation, or it can be an uncomfortable awareness that something is not 
feeling great. And we do want to notice it. We don't want to brush it away. We want to notice everything. So we're kind of taking mental notes, whatever is going on with us right now. I would like us to pay attention, if possible, to the eyes and notice what it is that they either feel or sense or want to do or even do or doing right now while we do the calming. Is there any sensation that you notice? Is there any memory that comes up? a feeling, perhaps we see colors or hear sounds, perhaps we remember something, perhaps we notice that the eyes move in some, in a certain way, maybe they contract and relax, maybe they move a little, perhaps they feel like they're floating, or sinking, whatever it is that the eyes are doing, we just want to notice it. Whatever it is that you've noticed, this is your body communicating with you. This is your body telling you that that's what it needs right now in order to address something to help with the well being of your health and your body. If perhaps you feel that your eyes are floating, allow yourself to flow with the eyes. Allow the eyes to do that. Not distract yourself with other things. If they're sinking, let them sink. Perhaps the rest of your body wants to sink down to the surface that you're sitting on or lying on. If those are contractions that you're feeling. Go with these contractions, allow your eyes to contract and then allow them to gently relax. Notice the ripple effect in your body. There's a good reason for the eyes to do whatever they're doing. If there's a memory that is coming up, just take a mental note. Go back to that memory later, try to figure out what it is. What does it tell you? What does this memory or this feeling connect to? Does it have a message for you? And since I don't want to keep this session for too long, we're going to notice how our body and our eyes feel right now. And we're going to ask our eyes if they would be willing to allow us to bring this short session of palming to an end. Your eyes might tell you that they don't. And then I'd like to ask you to stay with your palming, not you, Claudia, but others to stay palming. It's okay to listen to this conversation with your eyes closed. It's totally fine. And so Ask your eyes if, they're, if they want to open or not. And if they do, then slowly, slowly create some space between your fingers and allow the, air, the light to, to reach our, your eyes gently, not abruptly. Do everything from a place of gentleness and a lot of respect to your eyes and whatever it is that they're asking you for right now. And hopefully you all felt something that was meaningful to you today, or at least it felt relaxing and gentle and pleasant. And that's it. That was wonderful. <clears throat> Thank you so much. It was interesting. I, um, I noticed some lopsidedness, like my right eye. I left, I was like floating in the right. I was sinking and then I was itchy a little bit. And, um, and then I just naturally, I shifted my weight from two feet to just my left foot. And, um, and then they felt like balanced, like it felt balanced. And uh, so quickly, yeah. that's wonderful. Wow, yeah. that's a cool. So this was amazing. <laughs> this was really, really awesome. 
So I think your, I mean, your work is almost, it sounds like a little bit, when, again, I mean, I only experienced you at the conference, which was a couple of years ago. I don't remember, was it last year or two years ago? It was last October. Okay, actually. okay. <laughs> I was just thinking like today. What, and um, I just remember I was less doing and just really being more being and noticing and um, and it's interesting to me in my own journey or in, when I work with my clients and I think you have a similar experience that we're so detached from our bodies and noticing. Um, and so this is this was such a subtle little thing. And I noticed usually my palming is black and today it wasn't really dark at all, but I'm also working on a big event I'm doing this weekend and definitely a little bit more stress than usual for me. And um, so that could be a sign of, of that. So that was, I'm and curious if anybody fine. else, let me see, uh, ask on YouTube if there's any experiences. Shirley says, I love putting my hands over eyes. So you call that hands over eyes in the, in the part of method. In the method, yeah. We have other different names for exercises and that's the name for Tommy. Uh -huh, interesting. Um, so that was, I, I don't know if anybody else wants to share anything uh, on YouTube or anywhere else about the experience, but I think it's, you know, like you said, listening to the eyes, listening to the body and really having a guide like you helping to, um, you know, to, it's like you're like a guide. You're literally like a guide, right? We wouldn't dare to hike in the Himalayas without a guide. And it's kind of like a lot of times we, you know, for me, like deciding to get somebody to help me or guide me on my own, because we all have our blind spots, which is our topic in September, by the way, in my clear vision. Oh, nice. Blind spots, which could be, you know, literal in your eyes, but it could also be like things we literally don't notice about ourselves. And, um, so um, let me see in the chat. And then I do have, I mean, the questions on YouTube, I don't know if you can answer those. Uh, they're not directly related to the to the method that you're teaching, but um, Shirley is asking, I have an on and off eye issue. Middle of the night, I open the eyelid and it will scratch my, and it will scratch my eye, very painful. I put drops in every time I wake up. Thank you, no stomach issues that I know of. That's, uh, that's dry eye, of course. And I think you spoke about this with Nathan. Um, hi, but, yeah. <laughs> there are many things. I, I, I don't know that I'm necessarily, I necessarily have the ultimate answers for dry eye, but I think, right. That's from what we hear. Well, I think listening to the eyes can be really powerful for that too. Or just listening what needs to come Paula, And Paula as well, Paula um, working with contracting the, the, really the eyes get, a lot less dry and we can balance all the you know the little glands there that uh secrete the um the eyes but yeah <laughs> needs work <laughs> and she said actually she said i felt it was forcing me to calm down when i wanted to do the opposite listen see that's where the listening comes in. and then lauren said um on youtube i will use this palming for isotropia meaning like you know your eyes going in i had both eyes and now only one so i know it can be healed so um I think it's, yeah. I mean, do you have anything to add? Because I want to, I want you to share where people can find you or how they can work with you or, you know, share a little yes. bit about what, yeah. I, I wanted to connect to what you just said, like the guide, like walking the Himalaya. Really, we can all connect to our bodies on our own. I think people like me are uh, helpful just to do the first, to initiate that first connection. You have no idea. I, I work, I, I think that 99% of my clients are health practitioners. I work with so many people who are so connected to their bodies and are so aware of the body. They do phenomenal work with themselves. And over and over again, I hear from them, oh, I didn't realize that I wasn't connected to myself. And I'm like, you are actually very connected. But yes, there is another layer to that. Mm. And create that connection to help with that, you know, fine tuning what you hear and how respectful we should be so much more respectful than we are to our body. Really allow that exploration and keep saying yes to the body. For that, we need somebody that is a witness like myself. Mm -hmm. saying yes yes this sounds right to me let's go let's let's follow that and then it is less scary and after a few weeks or months of doing this 
we we develop such deep, deep trust in ourselves that from there on, we can do it on our own. But we need that initiation with somebody that we can trust, that can really hold our hand, witness it there. Sometimes a lot of pain comes out. We want that other person to tell us it is okay. It, you will not stay with that pain forever. And not even until, you know, it, it doesn't even necessarily have to go beyond the session. Usually we come to resolution within the session. And then people feel so good and their passion to life is so much stronger because they, they realize something about themselves. So I just want to say the guidance is sometimes very important, very helpful. And the way we started today with hands over eyes is usually how I start any session with any client. And from there, we just go deeper and deeper and deeper into the messages of the body. And it is just a fascinating journey. And also, it is a lot of fun. It's not scary at all. I mean, it can be scary sometimes. And it's just once we let ourselves dive into it, it's, it's just we're so powerful. And, and that's, that's all we actually, have to do. That, 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 that's very amazing. I actually wanted to ask you one more thing and then there's one question on YouTube and then we come to a close and you do have to share with us how we can find you. But okay. <laughs> so, so Susan is asking, both my eyes burned a little when I covered them. I don't know why I had washed my hands right before the exercise because of my cat. I think I rinsed them well. Any ideas? And I don't even think it has to do with dirty hands, but what are you thinking? I didn't hear the beginning. What happened to her? Oh, her eyes burned when she covered them and she said she had cleaned her hands and so she was wondering... Obviously, we can never give medical they were, advice to doctors. They were anyway. itchy? I, I keep you know, like burning, burning a little, burning. Burning, yeah. Burning, I don't think it was from the eyes. I think the eyes were telling that something was burning. Burning. <laughs> and I think that maybe sometimes burning eyes is a, is a, is a, a hint. Maybe not. I don't know. We have to go with, deeper into this that we, we demand too much of ourselves and the eyes just cannot bear all of that. But I'm, I'm only guessing here. Yeah, Definitely, I, think I don't think it has anything the, to do with the eyes and with the hands. <laughs> this is where working with you will obviously then uncover. And that's why I think, and like you said, so um, before you share how people can find you, do you also give people like, I don't like the word homework, but is there other things? Are they just coming for sessions or are you things like a little protocol that you do after in between the sessions or how do you, um, how do you approach this? It really depends. And I'm glad that you asked me because um, a client came to me a few months ago to do work with the eyes and the, and the body. And we had a beautiful, like mind blowing session of listening to the eyes. And I asked the client, I said, like, this was really a mind-blowing session. It was so good. I don't even know that the client understood all the depth of what was going on. But for that, you need a second session and a third session, you know, to go to, to understand. Because it can be overwhelming. And I said, if you can please just give your eyes the attention once a day, just connect either to both eyes or one eye each day. Just calm down, do the hands over her eyes and see what the messages are that are coming. And that client was so disappointed that I didn't give actual exercises. And I'm like, wow, I just gave you the key to do the speediest, most powerful work with yourself, like quickly. And you ditched that and you wanted exercises. And I'm like, okay, first we need to trust. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes I just let people continue the process that we've done to bring our sessions. Sometimes the sessions are so powerful that we just have to kind of like process it until the next time. And then other times we really do work with exercises. And then I ask people to do the exercises on a daily basis until, until I see them again. It really depends on the client. I have some clients that if I started offering exercises to them, they'll be like, okay, you're disappointing. <laughs> we don't do that with them. I, I didn't do exercises when I studied with a nut. Like, no, that's not what my eyes wanted. So it depends, depends on the client. It's really important to have this open conversation 
and communication. I was so happy that the client told me, that's not what I want. I want exercises. And I said, okay, we'll just do the work slower. No problem at all. And, you, and I'm curious because I don't like the word exercises, but I do talk about practices and awareness and the mindfulness and paying attention and all those things. Yeah. But I do find with refractive errors like nearsighted, farsighted astigmatism, there has to be some kind of aspect of a physical protocol in addition to all that where you like otherwise because I've had clients too with miraculous sessions and amblyopia and things where like at some point you like you have to even if it's just a little thing you have to do a little bit yes. um it's physical therapy yeah. like, no, I'm starting, like and she's like I just want to like no no you have to actually do some of the strengthening in between so I love your answer that you said it really depends on the situation the client what the what the actual challenge is or what the what showed up Absolutely. And so it varies on, you know, what the actual, yeah, that makes total sense. <laughs> I can tell you, I, I myself, although I helped myself with the work with that, not so much, and I changed my life so, like, tremendously. I do Ray Gottlieb's exercises on a daily basis. <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I love I them, do. I find them helpful, I do them. <laughs> I don't do much, but I do like diverging. I had the isotropia too. So I do, I do some diverging, but not every day, but I do have a whole clear morning ritual that I do. And it's more, it's not just eyes, but I feel like those certain, um, you know, whatever you want to call it, prayer, meditation, whatever, but kind of, you know, setting the tone for the day, having the intention, and then also doing some things like, especially when I'm really stressed, like right now, I notice my vision is always sharp, but now it's a little blurry. I'm like, Oh, uh, and I know it's a stress and I know it's just being too many hours. It's not just the hours at the computer. It's also the mental of like being a big Oops. event and hosting a big event and then getting it all right and trying to be great and not have any technical things. And you told me all the planets I'm retrograde. I'm like, no, 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 don't say that. <laughs> but you know, Sorry. I mean, get my dear, there's phases in life where we just have to crank a little more than we want to and hopefully then um but yeah i love what you said about the lifestyle how many changes you made because if this is your daily life this is not sustainable and we will get sick and if it's like sometimes we have more you know we have to take care of a family member or whatever that's just times that are a little bit more demanding on us then you write that's normal so let's finish where can people find you what do you have any programs or t tell us a little bit about that so first of all luckily um, I had to go um, away <laughs> to, to, to help my sister. So I'm away and therefore I had to uh, postpone a, um, a free community class that I do four times a year. So the next one is actually next week. So if people want to kind of get a taste of the method, uh, you're welcome to. My next session, which is next week, next Tuesday, I think it is. When is the 12th? It's next Tuesday, right? Um, um, the 12th is next Tuesday. Yes. Do you have a link for that? Is that the one that you gave me? Uh, no, the one I gave you is the one it's on my website. Basically go to gracefullies.com. That's my website. You can find everything there. You can find great, links great. to my classes, um, online programs, digital courses, my blog, my podcast, my mailing list, whatever you want, you can find in my website. You can schedule, uh, a free consultation with me to decide if you want to do some one-on-one -on -one work with me. Anyways, next week, I'm going to have a back care focused um, session. However, even if you have eye issues and now no problems with your back, still join the session. You will find that things that we will do there will be very beneficial for you. I promise that we will also work with the eyes because the eyes are important for our back health. Um, so this is one option to connect with me and to see, you know, a little bit of the work. In October, I begin new group classes and otherwise, you know, just one-on-one -on -one work. So go to your website and that's where all the information is about the Everything's free class there. On, the, on Tuesday the 12th. And uh, well, thank you so much. This is wonderful. I think I would love to bring you back. And, you know, I think it's so... Um, yeah, well, you, there were so many profound things that you said that I really, you know, feel like I'm so happy that you were able to come on and share a little bit about your own journey and how you approach it and work with clients. And so you, I know you have online programs, you work with people one on one, you do all kinds of different levels of support. So thank you so much. And I know you're thank you, Claudia. It was so much fun to talk to you. Thank, thank you. And thank you for everyone who was here. 
you have this radiance about you. I noticed that in the conference, you know, where you're like, when you told me, I didn't know that you were such a sick child. So I'm like, you know, I was like, wow, I did not see that coming. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, okay. sometimes Thank because we start sick, we learn to maintain it better. <laughs> Take, well, take thank better you. care of ourselves. Thank you so much for being on the show and uh, goodbye, YouTube. We have a little bit of extra time with my Clear Vision Club now, but uh, 